fifth graders, happy Friday. Uh, we're getting into lesson 23 here. And yes, we have guest teachers and yes, they are brilliant. We have a um, young man by the name of Cole. And then we also have another young man by the name of Ethan. And they are bringing lesson 23 to you today. And then gentlemen, what are we doing in lesson 23? Uh, we're comparing the size of the product to the size of the factors. Interesting. Okay, cool. Uh, they're going to do an awesome job, so enjoy it. Here we go. I really, so we're getting into lesson 23. I'm going to do a couple of problems before guest teachers take over. Um, I really like this lesson because it's really just a riff on what we were doing in lesson 22. And we're uh, just continuing to really, really understand and go deeper um, in our understanding as far as what happens to products when we multiply numbers together is essentially what we're doing. So here we are to sort the following expressions by rewriting them in the table. So we're going to look at each of these expressions and then we have to think, hmm, will the product be less than the boxed number or will the product be greater than the boxed number? So as you guys can see, we're just going to continue thinking about what happens when we multiply a number by values equal to, less than, or greater than 1. Okay, so 13.89 is in the box. It's being multiplied by a number that is greater than 1. So the product is going to be greater than the box. I'm actually just going to draw an arrow. Whenever we multiply something by a value that is greater than 1, we're going to end up uh, with a product that's greater than the original number. Um, what about here? So we have 0.3 times 0 0.069. This is less than 1. So the product for this is going to be less than our original number. These underlined values, by the way, you guys, is our uh, what we are referring to as scaling factors. Very impressive term. Uh, architects use scaling factors a lot when you're increasing the size of pictures or blueprints or what have you or decreasing the size. So here we're um, multiplying 0.3 by 0 0.069 this number is smaller than one, so 0.3 is going to decrease in size. Here are our scaling factors. So our original number is 602, 602. Our scaling factor is less than one, so our product is going to be less than our original factor. Here, 0.72 times 1.24, our scaling factor is greater than one, um, so our product is going to be greater than our original. Okay, this I, I think this is this is pretty straightforward, but certainly worth another um, day of our time to really make sure that this is completely concrete in our understanding. Here we have uh, 102.03 times 4.015. This scaling factor is larger than one, so it means that the product is going to be greater than the original number. Here we have 0.2 times 0.1. This scaling factor is less than 1. So that means that the final product is going to be less than the original number. So I know this looks a little a little nutty, but I think hopefully you guys can follow the arrows there. Uh, and B, you were asked to explain your sorting by writing a sentence that tells what the expression in each column of the table have in common. Well, we kind of talked about this already, but just to be co completely crystal clear, um, let's grab, so this expression and this expression and this expression, I'm not going to write this down, I'm just going to say it verbally, all have scaling factors, I'll underline them in blue, that are greater than one. And you guys know the resulting product will be greater than the boxed number, greater than our original number. Um, on the other hand, these numbers, these expressions, so oh, it's too close to red, sorry guys, I'll grab this. These expressions that I'm underlining in yellow 
their scaling factors are numbers that are less than one. So uh, this expression, uh, this expression, and this expression, all of the box numbers are being multiplied by, um, by, by numbers that are less than one. So the product is going to be less than the box number or less than the original number. Cool? Let's take a look at one more example, guys, for lesson 23. Um, here we are going to write a statement using one of the following phrases. Here are our options here in bold to compare the values of the expressions. And then I'll, we'll talk about how we know this. Okay, so here in A we have four times 990, I'm sorry, 988 thousandths compared to four. So we need to take one of these phrases, these four phrases is slightly more than, is a lot more than, slightly less than, is a lot less than. So we have four and four. So four is being multiplied by a number that is just slightly less than one. So um, if we were to compare the value of these expressions, when we multiply four by something that is just slightly less than one, it's going to be, when we're uh, comparing it to its original number, it's going to be, um, is slightly, can you guys see that okay? Slightly that less than four. We're almost multiplying four by one. Almost, it's very, very close here. So the result is going to be, it's just slightly less than four. Let's look here. So we have one and five hundredths times eight tenths compared to eight tenths. So eight tenths is the number that we're looking at. So eight tenths is being, um, is being multiplied by a number that's just slightly more than one. So when we're comparing 0.8 times uh, 1.05, uh, this side is just going to be slightly, slightly because it's so close to one, slightly more than one. Because it's almost, again, kind of like this, but an opposite. 8.8 .8 is being almost multiplied by just the number one. Let's look here. So we have 1,725 times uh, 13 thousandths uh, versus 1,725. So 1,725 is being multiplied by a number that is significantly less than one. This is a tiny, tiny, tiny number. So when we multiply 1,725 by uh, 13 thousandths, it is going to be a lot a lot less it is a lot less because this number is not close to one. It's a really tiny number. So 1,725 times 13 thousandths is a lot less than 1,725. Um, I like this because we're not actually doing any calculations. You're going to see that here in a second with um, not that I don't love calculations, you guys know I do, but I, I like, this is kind of the philosophy behind the math, so this is a super cool lesson. Um, here, up next, you guys are going to see our guest teachers. Rachel is 1.5 times as heavy as her cousin Kayla. Another cousin, Jonathan, weighs 1.25 times as much as Kayla. List the cousins from lightest to heaviest and explain your thinking. So I'm going to draw Rachel's tape diagram, and I'm gonna now I'm gonna draw Kayla's tape diagram. So Kayla's tape diagram should be should be less than Rachel's because because it says Rachel is 1.5 times as heavy as her cousin Kayla. And here is Jonathan's tape diagram. Everyone shouldn't be looking at me. I'm surprised. It it should be in between Kayla's and Rachel's because it says he's 1.25 times as much as heavy as Kayla, but that's not he's not quite as heavy as Rachel. So 
we as we can see from this tape diagram, Kayla is the smallest. Um, Jonathan is kind of in the middle. And Rachel is the heaviest of the group. Um, we can see this because because Kayla is Kayla is everybody's comparing to Kayla and Jonathan is 1.25 times as much as Kayla and Rachel is 1.5 times and 1.25 isn't as much as 1.5. During the science class, Tio, Carson, and Dakir measure the length of their bean sprouts. Carson's sprout is 0 0.9 times the length of Tio's, and Dakir's is 1.08 times the length of Tio's. Whose bean sprout is the longest, sh the shortest? Explain your reasoning. So first, let's draw Tio's. Tio should be about average size. We should leave enough room to draw over here. And so, next let's draw Carson's. Carson's is 0 0.9, so it should be a little bit smaller. And in the box, we should write T-O, or T, times 9 tenths, or 0 0.9. I'm going to put 9 tenths because it can fit in there. Next, let's draw Dakir's. Don't forget to label it. Let's draw it about this large. And in the box, let's do T times uh, 1.08. I should have done 1.8 hundreds. We've got to stick to whatever we're doing. But now we can figure this out. We know that Dakir's is the longest because his is 1.08 times the length of Tio's, while Carson's is the shortest because he was 0 0.9 times the length of Tio's, which means Dakir's, Dakir's, is the largest, and Carson's is the shortest and don't forget to explain your reasoning bye